Hi, it's Ray Shalene from Pro Shaper in Child, Massachusetts, and uh, this is where we left off on part one of building this uh, left, right front uh, Jaguar fender. Uh, we made uh, this section of the front part of the fender with this flexible shape pattern. Now we didn't get it completely finished in that first episode, and I don't know if we'll get it completely finished this time, but we'll. We'll attempt to get it as much as we can get done. What are we going to do tonight? Well, we left it off. The flexible shape pattern's fitting pretty good. There's a little bit of looseness right in here that still needs to be puffed up a little bit. And then we're going to trim it properly. And uh, we're also going to set the arrangement with the gauges. We've got a whole bunch of gauges that Mark made here. And uh, then we will do all the detail work after it's trimmed and everything and set, the gauges are set. Um, this is a wired edge here. This is a flange, a flange, a joggle, and a flange. So there's a lot to do. So let's get busy. So I've determined that what we need is right here is the main problem that remains here right here it's got to be built up a little bit so we're going to put that in the wheel and we're going to pump that up a little bit so it still has to come up about an eighth of an inch so we're going to wheel it for a little bit at higher pressure we're compression stretching it and in doing so, we're adding area, which causes that to grow and fill into the flexible shape pattern. Now, the danger is going too strong. If we go too strong, we'll overdevelop it. So we don't want to do it too much. Just a little bit. Back this off. Pull it out, and then we'll check it. No, still have a little bit. So this can, might take five attempts to get that to perfection. You have to have patience. If you're too aggressive, you will do overdevelopment. Overdevelopment is a, a, a detour that's fixable. You either have to shrink it down with heat or stretch all the edges if you uh, overdevelop it. So that can take a half an hour or three quarters of an hour. It's better to spend 10 minutes getting this uh, pumped up to the correct level. All right, so back that off and we'll check that. It's getting better. All right, now I really should have some registration marks. I have the residue of them. I'm going to remark them again here. So that's to ensure that there's the little residue of them right there. That ensures that you always get the same reading. If you if you go in different spots on the panel every time, you're going to get a different reading. So these registration marks are very important. Little index marks. Now, if you can see here, Mark can bring the camera over. There's uh, an old line, registration line, and this is the new registration line for that corner right there. Uh, so that is about um, almost a half an inch of growth. So over the, uh, the distance from here to here, um, this surface has grown a half an inch in length. So what that means is uh, every half inch or so, it's growing, you know, 20 thousandths of an inch or so. And you add up all those little 20 thousandths of an inch or almost a millimeter, it comes up to a half an inch. So that's the, the miracle of uh, stretching the sheet metal. 
just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit adds up. Sometimes hard to get your head wrapped around it, but it's cumulative. So it needs a little bit right there too. This is all nice and tight here, but that's a little loose. You can see that the flexible shape pattern is moving a little bit. Over here, there's no movement. It's nice and tight against the surface. It's all nice and tight down here pretty much too. So it's still a little loose right in this spot right here. So. Give it a little more. And every time you put that flexible shape pattern on, there's just a little residual um, plaster dust. So it leaves a little plaster dust on your panel every single time. So you make sure that you clean all that dust off before you wheel it. Otherwise, it'll just kind of impregnate it into the panel. So we're, our goal here is to get the flexible shape pattern fitting really good. Then the next goal will be surface quality. Surface quality uh, is when you put the panel in the light and you walk it around in the light, you'll see little flaws. There's a little dimple right here, a little wheel mark or something. Now that'll have to be corrected later. But that's going to be the next step. There's a couple stop marks here. So all those will get corrected after we get the um, area value 100% correct. And that's our goal with this flexible shape pattern is, is putting the correct area value into the panel. Now, if we were using a buck, it would be the same thing. The goal is to put the correct area value into the panel. But when you use a buck, the area value and the arrangement value have to be uh, correct for it order, in order for it to fit on the buck. With a flexible shape pattern, the arrangement value uh, doesn't have to be 100% correct until you set the arrangement, which is secondary to the primary goal of first getting the area value. So it's really close now. There's a little bit up in here, a little bit here, and a little bit here. So it's, it's like right in here. Get that dust off. Check that. It's a lot better. Just a little bit more right in here. I think that'll do it. Then we'll go after the surface quality. After the surface quality, the arrangement value. Feels good.
go back to our registration marks accurately. Yeah, okay, that's much better. All right, there's just a little bit up in here. That's all nice and tight here. Right in here now. And these uh, loose spots, they'll move around on you. Um, the key is patience, patience, patience. The metal always tries to trick you, but in the end, you you have the upper hand here. That's looking really good. Now, if an edge is loose, that would mean that the panel is overdeveloped. And I always do this to represent a overdevelopment. So say right here, I pumped it up a little bit too hard what will happen is you're going to see the flexible shape pattern go loose just like that. So if this was overdeveloped right here, this flexible shape pattern would be flapping in the breeze like that. And the way you can tell a, a, a real true uh, overdevelopment is if you can go like this and you can actually pinch and you get that little flap there like that. This is an exaggeration, but sometimes it can be real subtle. Now, for instance, we put this on here like this, and it looks like this edge is kind of ski jumping up, but I'm not gonna pay too much attention to it because when I hold this all down like that and then hold it down with my hand, there's no extra material here, so. That's not a problem. I mean, if it was overdeveloped, I'd be able to go like this. I call that pinching an inch. And you can be able to do that, but that's not the case here. So now, let's do the surface quality. We've got to critique the surface quality with our eyes and with our hands and with the light. With a paper towel on our hand, you, you can feel a lot of stuff with the paper towel. All right, so now we go after that surface quality. So I'm just going to give it a light once over. Now it's really light pressure. Maybe give it a little bit more here. And the light pressure won't really stretch it too much. It'll just smooth it. Remember the English wheel uh, can shape, which is stretching. It can smooth. And it also can arrange, which is bending. So it does those three things. Now a few people have been asking, well, what's the deal with the, the Jaguar bonnet? Aren't we going to finish it? Well, this is part of the bonnet. Um, I'm stalled because I haven't had the time yet to finish the right side of the bonnet top. Once I get a chance to get that finished, I weld that together and then the next segment will be uh, all the welding going on. And then that, uh, and then also we have to do the louvering. Still working on that uh, louver die. Haven't done much this week on We've got another project we're working on. So we'll get to it. What's important is the lesson, not the time that elapsed.
So we're just doing this once over on the top here with low pressure and then we'll do a, the observation and the, uh, running our hands over it to uh, see what the surface reveals. All right, these are the uh, standard household paper towels. They work really good. And I'm rubbing this, and uh, even though it looks really good, there's a lot of little lumps and bumps I got to work out yet. So, where I concentrated on those areas to pump them up, I didn't do too much blending. So, we've got to blend that all in now. So let's, the worst part is right around in here. Now I should be able to see it too if I, if I hold it up to the light. And this is a, a great tool too, is what I call the horizon tool. You hold that up and you see any anomalies in the surface. An anomaly would be, there's supposed to be a nice graceful curve there. If you see all of a sudden a, a dip uh, or a bump, a dip or a bump, those are the giveaways that you've got some more work to do. This is actually showing pretty good. There's a little bit of ski jump action here, but this is going to be all trimmed off anyways. That's where that jog will go, so that's not a really a strong consideration here. So the, the horizon view is not doing too much for me on this panel because I've got it developed pretty nicely. Um, the other uh, tool we have here is the light playing on it. Now, there's a couple ways to read the surface with the light. And generally, um, you can put it in a good light and you just kind of wiggle it like this. And if you see any, um, it sort of like winks back, back at you. If you see stuff, then that's a, that's a problem. Well, there's a little stop mark or something right here. I think I mentioned it earlier. So we gotta get that out. So this is a process of elimination. Just uh, identify all the little flaws and then uh, address them. And usually it's just a few cu couple passes under the wheel and you can smooth all that stuff out. Now everything you do at this stage makes it it's a lot easier to do it now than it is to do it later when we get it all welded together and everything. Putting all the edges on it and then you see a spot then you have to deal with it with the uh, slapper and dolly to straighten it up because oftentimes it's not so easy to get it into the wheel once you start assembling everything up. So try to be super critical of your surface and find all these little um, really minute flaws and get those picked up first. Now sometimes I use the, like the shadow of the, the wheel here and sometimes they can see stuff in the shadow. I see something right here. That's me. No, there's a bump there. <laughs> it wasn't your reflection mark, it was the a little hollow there. It was probably only one or two thousandths of an inch deep. Yeah, let's see if you can see the cameraman mark. You see him? <laughs> probably noticed that I don't have a quick release on my wheel. Uh, years ago I figured out that uh, they're really not needed. I wouldn't make a wheel with a quick release on it. I don't see the, the real purpose for it. The reason being is number one, all my anvils I really like to uh, put a, a, a strong relief on the edges and you want to get into the panel, into the wheel, you take the panel at a 45 degree angle. 
and it just lets you right in. If you, if you go like, like this, you're clanking the thing together. It doesn't go in as, as user friendly. This was very user friendly, right? Like that. There's no clash. Now how good you get this depends on how advanced your perfection disease has progressed. Mine's pretty bad. Humans and fish are very similar, I think. We like shiny objects. <sighs> Men like shiny cars, women like shiny jewelry. Which one's more expensive, the jewelry or the cars? Hmm. And this surface quality quest here, um, it's not going to change the area value too much. It's so subtle that it doesn't have the uh, ability to, to upset the apple cart here. And the longer you get it out sometimes like this, the more the defects reveal themselves. That's why I like to do the, what I call the 20 foot look. You can put it like this and then walk around it and look for flaws. That's looking pretty good. The flaws are probably down to only a couple thousandths of an inch. Let's try the uh, paper towel on it. Now it's still telling me that there's a little bit, a little bit right in here. A little transition to where I developed it a little bit. So I'm going to pump that right there just a little bit and see if that'll smooth it out. It's not showing any surface. Uh, uh, light defects, so it's really subtle. Let me go back over. Okay. Yeah, it's still still a little strong right in here that's where it needed that extra material so we're going to work on either side of it and maybe I might pump the pressure up just a little bit we're doing the blend here I should take care of that part. I'll try that. That's a lot better. Right here, it's almost perfect now.
It looks, feels like it could stand a little bit right there. Now another tool that we can use is sweeps. So let's get uh, some sweeps and uh, you'll see what the sweeps do. The sweeps are actually a pretty good tool to see stuff that you really can't feel or see sometimes. So we're going to get a sweep on there. We'll put it on the, the master here. Well. It won't work yet until we set the arrangement. Let's set the arrangement first before we put the sweeps on. So we're pretty close. We can set the arrangement. What we're going to do next is we'll put this back on and uh, we're going to put all the index marks where the gauges go and then, then we'll set the arrangement and maybe do uh, another trim and then after the arrangement is set, then we can compare the sweep reading from the original to this new one. And that might reveal a few flaws here and there that we don't perceive yet. Okay, we got all the uh, gauges all marked up now. Bring it over close to the camera here. And we actually have 19 gauges on this. This would be very similar to a, a buck you would have, uh, these would be the stations. These are just external stations. So right now the panel is showing pretty smooth. There might be a few flaws still in it, but we're going to get it to the correct arrangement and double check that surface quality after. So first thing we do is we have uh, north-south and we have east-west. So we've got the gauges. These are all north-south gauges, these are east-west gauges. So we're going to look at the north-south first. And uh, every gauge has an index point, plus they're cut off where they're supposed to at the ends of where they run. So we put this right here at the index point. There's your index point. And you always want to put the number and the index point and the information of what the gauge is relevant to on each gauge. So we're setting it there and it's you always look at the widest point that's where it needs more bending so a lot of this bending can be done right here I call this the belly break you just got to kind of put your hands down here this is the fulcrum this is the lever here you're using your belly to bend this over a little bit now if you bend it over too much you can easily bend it back not a problem but you go incrementally a little bit, a little bit, a little bit until you get the desired results without kinking. You don't want any kinks. So you can incrementally measure this too. So you see that we made a bunch of progress. We're down to a little more than a half an inch right here. So this is still the, the spot that has the widest gap. So that's where our hands want to be. And we're going to use our belly to bend that over. I move my hand so I don't kink it in one spot. And it generally wants to go where you want it to go. If you kink it, it's not the end of the world. You can put it back in the wheel and take the kink up pretty easy. So we're getting closer here. Now I'm over bent right here, so I got to pull that back a little bit but underbent here, so let's push it this way now. Wait a minute. I got that right? Yeah, yeah. Let's push that this way now. And then we'll open that one up by going like this over here. 
and we'll check it again. Okay, so we're a lot better here. We're still over bent right here. So I'm gonna lift that up like that. Well, that was a little too much, so. I say a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. You get too uh, overzealous, it uh, goes too much on you. So I'm really close now. It's not, it's not super important that you get them perfect right in the get first go round. We'll dial them all in a little bit here. And that one's looking pretty good. Needs a little bit in the center here. So give that a little in the center. See if that improved it. Yeah. That's a little better. Uh, nine. Nine's looking pretty good. It's a little loose there too. Eight. All right, so that one needs a bunch right in here. So let's get that in there. You always want to use a blanket on your bench too. These are moving blankets, inexpensive moving blankets. It's nothing worse than scratching your beautiful shiny panel up that you spend so much time on, so you got to protect it. That's pretty close. Now, number seven. I don't see number seven. All right, so here's number seven. And the ends always bend easy on a, a panel, so it's a little overbent right here and underbent there. So let's get the underbend in first. And then we'll take the overbend out a little bit right there. Let's see what that reads now. Okay, so the whole thing needs a little bit. All right, so seven's looking pretty good. Now we got a few small ones in the front here. Let's see what they say. Uh, we got number 12. Number 12 is right here. That's looking pretty good. 13. That's 15. 15. That's looking good. No, no, it needs a little bit there. All right, so this one here is there's not much leverage here, so we'll bend this one in the wheel. So we have very little pressure here, and we're just rolling that, pulling it down. Get that number 15 gauge, and then we can monitor it. All right, so we're right on the well. Needs a tiny little bit more here. Very easy to do this way. That's pretty good. Oh, I get criticized for showing it to the camera. There it is right there. All right, so we've got the north-south gauges looking pretty good. 
we'll go back to that number 11. I think that needed a little dialing in. That's not bad. A little bit more right in the center here. Still need some more. But let's see with the east west say. We've got number 16B, which is right here. For some reason, Mark made two 16Bs. In case I want to use it more than once. Yeah. We'll get rid of that 16B. And right here, we got a little dip in here, so we're going to bring that up. That's all going to get set by the flange when we put the flange in on there. So we got all the gauges set pretty decent. We put this number 18 on here and uh, a little bit of gap here. But this is the gap that concerns me. That's nothing right there. This here is showing it's loose over here. And when I put the flexible shape pattern back on, I do notice that it's a, it's a little bit loose on this end. So, looks like I might have overdeveloped it a little bit and I might have to stretch this edge out a little. So, I'm going to cut some of the material off here and then just wheel this edge to uh, correct that little bit of overdevelopment. Alright, so I'm taping up a, a preliminary cut line. I'll still leave myself 3 8 of an inch and I'm going to cut this excess off before I stretch this edge out a little bit. We're using the cordless bore shear, shear here. And this blue tape just allows you to really see the line really good. It's easy to snap nice clean lines with it. We got a little gap here. It's about a quarter of an inch. This one's just an arrangement gap here. I got a. It, it might need a little more area here too. It's possible. I'm going to check that. So I'm going to get that a little better by stretching this edge up. Now, this is a super common problem that happens on a lot of panels, as you develop in the panel and you overdevelop it a little bit. Now I can bring this up in a couple different ways. Uh, one way is you put it on the beater bag and I use this medium crowned end on the hammer and I'm going to strike this edge and I'm going to make sure I stretch that edge out nice. Just nice little love taps here. So that makes what I call the ski jump. So now I can come in board with it a little bit, but I don't want to go too much. It just makes my problem worse. So let me wheel that.
Now if I do any wheeling in board of this point right now, it just it makes the problem worse. So first thing we're going to do is verify what the gauge said. We did a little adjustment and we want to see if our adjustment worked. So first thing we got to do is make sure number seven is, is correct. And number seven is pretty close. So we'll check number eight too. Here, let's see, eight. Eight's looking really good. So it was the 18 that we were in trouble with here. So we had about three sixteenths of an inch over here. Let's see what we got now. Actually, it looks worse. That's surprising. All right, so we got to make that better. I got the right one, yeah. Let's see. Seven. Oh, I'm a little over bent on seven here. Yeah. That's why. All right, bring seven back up here a little. Still got to come up more. So it's. It, uh, you got to stretch that out a little stronger. So I'm going to hit it a little harder here. Take 18. And now it's hitting the edge. But see, we got this gap right here. We do have a gap up here, and I got to investigate that in a minute. But this is the one that concerns me right here. So I brought the edge up, so now I got to fill this in a little bit here. So I'm just going to hit that now. And if you left this panel like this um, and you welded it to the back panel, by the time you were done, when you got the welds done, they would look like this, which is a very easy fix. You just stretch them up like that. But we're trying to get it really close. Right, we'll wheel that out and see what that says. So, I um, adjusted that back end, which was uh, a little bit of a gap there on 18 gauge, eight, number 18 gauge. Um, there was a little bit actual overdevelopment, it seemed, right in here. So I had to correct by just stretching this back end out. We put the flexible shape batten on, we remarked it, and we've got a really nice fine line all around the edge. We're going to tape that. But there's that gauge now, and it's laying down perfect, just like it's supposed to. So the arrangement's all set. The gauges are all fitting good. The next step is putting this fine line tape 
and doing a another preliminary uh, cut and also after I was going to tip this at well this edge needs a uh, wired edge this edge needs a flange this needs a joggle and this needs a joggle I was going to do them all but it would be better if I didn't do this wired edge yet and I didn't do this flange yet because I'd like to do the weld here and if you have the flange here and the flange here it's difficult to planish that weld out in the wheel and I want to be able to planish that in the wheel so uh, I'll do that after I get this welded and I'll do that flanging operation all as an assembly it's the poison pill you either do the flanging now where it's a lot easier to do or you do the flanging later if you do it easy now it makes it difficult for doing the weld planishing if you do it later it makes it difficult to do the flanging so I'm opting for the welding I'll deal with the flanging later I'm going to flange this I'm going to joggle first step mark it with the blue tape trim then flange joggle and then we're going to be done with this and you'll see what a nice panel this is so let's take this flexible shape pattern off and we'll put the blue tape on. Why do I like the blue tape? The blue tape allows you to see the line very well. So you can measure from it, you can cut, and uh, you can easily adjust the line. If you put a magic marker line on and it's a little, got a little wiggle in it, uh, it's very easy to correct with the blue tape. We know all the lines are supposed to be nice, fair lines, nice uh, gradual curves, nothing with a little wiggle or something in it. So you don't have to see the entire operation of putting the blue tape on. We'll just do this little section right here. Get the blue tape done, and then we'll do the trimming. So it's a good idea to have good light. I got the light could be a little better, but... I'm following my magic marker line here. It goes down really nice. If you have a mistake, you just lift it up and redo it. That's the beauty of it. So I'm going to look at this line after I get it done. If I see any anomalies in the line, I will make a correction. We used a super fine marker. I got a nice magic marker line. So I look at that line and there's no real anomalies in it. So I like that line. That's going to work well. So now I'm going to just continue on and then we'll come back and the whole thing will be taped, including where I'm going to trim it. All right, I have it all marked out now with the blue tape. And you can see how nice those lines are with that blue tape. So I'm going to take my trusty cordless bore shears and I'm going to cut that off. So I'll do this cut first as the flange here. I'm cutting it right to size. All right, now there's this, another flange on this leading edge right here. We'll trim that out. Now I'm going to use a uh, pair of Milwaukee's here, shears, just to cut this little corner out. And this is all marked according to the instructions of the original panel. Measure the original panel, copy all those measurements right on with the blue tape. Right, now, this is the headlight joggle, and we'll cut that out. All 
Now this flange here, I've actually added a little extra. It's about an eighth of an inch extra, but we're going to cut it off. I'm not going to tip that flange because I'm going to wait till I weld that back section on. Once you use one of these cordless shears, you'll never go back. They're absolutely amazing. One of my students uh, told me about this a couple of years ago, two and a half years ago, and it took me at least a year before I broke down and bought a pair. And I, and I, I was really foolish not jumping on it right away. So here we are, we're all trimmed out, and it looks a lot better already, and uh, we're going to throw this flange here, we're going to tip that down, and I believe that's a 90 degree flange, that's what it looks like. This one's got a little bit of an angle, we'll make a little gauge for that, and then we'll do this joggle, and after that we'll be finished. So let's do this one first, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer this uh, measurement to the back side, blue tape the back side. You always leave this blue tape on the front because that's your, your proof line. After you bend it, you should see that is where the very edge is. So uh, when you bend aluminum such as this, you're going to gain a sixteenth of an inch. So when I put my line in the back, I'm going to move my line in a little bit, inboard to, to the center of the panel about a sixteenth and then I will tip it and, and uh, because of the bend allowance it'll, it'll actually end right here but I'll be tipping it inboard a little bit. So this perimeter stuff I can take off. I'll take this tape off. So I'll clean the panel up a little bit more and get this marked on the inside then we'll go to the tipping operation. Alright we're at the tipping wheel now and we're going to start this in here and we'll make one run and see what we got. And all I have to do is push it through. I don't need no stinking electric motor. We see where we're at. I moved that tape on the back side in a little bit. It's looking good. So let's give it another shot. Now we only pinch this just a little bit. This is a urethane wheel on the bottom and a soft edge on the top wheel here on the tipper. And uh, we have to push this up like this. This is where the action for the tipping actually happens with a little leverage. It's just a leverage machine. That's it. And we probably won't go to 90 degrees on this on the tip, but we can. I change out the bottom wheel. I've got a different wheel. I've shown that in other videos. But we'll probably do this with a slapper and dolly, bring it over real quickly. And then we'll have to shrink this edge. When you have less leverage, there's not much material here. You have to push a little harder to get the results. So there it's coming over. It's following the line really nicely. And now you'll see it'll start to have extra material. This will need to be shrunk up. So let's go over to the shrinker and we'll shrink that a little bit. And that actually will bring it over a little too. So that tightened it up nice, and now we'll uh, tip it some more here.
That's better. And we'll give it one more pass here. Now you don't increase the pressure. You just want this to give a slight pinch. There we go. So we're almost over. The rest of it we can do with the uh, sh the uh, slapper and dolly. So let's get the slapper and dolly and bring it over to 90 degrees. All right, it's a dolly I made. Uh, there's nothing as in, in, I, in my uh, knowledge of in the marketplace of the shape like this, but it works really good for these edge tipping operations. So I'm gonna put this over the edge like this. Let's slap this over. This is the fulcrum, this is the lever. This is uh, not annealed or anything, so it's pretty stiff. All right, so we got it over. We look at our line. We're a little fat over the line, so we're going to have to refine that a little bit. That means that uh, we might have to take uh, the, the dolly and reposition it a little bit closer here and then walk that in a little. But first, let's check the gauge, which is gauge number 17, and the index mark. Let me put that in a little brighter here. Index mark is right there. And you'll see, uh-oh, Mark put the index line only on one side. One of the 20 commandments are, thou shalt put the index mark on both sides of your gauge. And Mark says, there's <laughs> just a flange at the bottom, so you can't have an index. <laughs> He's very defensive. All right, so there's what we have. So now we're gonna have to go over to the shrinker and make this conform to that. So over to the shrinker we go. All right, so the best way to approach this is you always look for the widest point. Here it is, so that's where I'm gonna start, right over there. Uh-oh, we got a problem, look at that. It won't go in there. So we might have to tip it up this way. Let's see if that will work. Oh, that goes in. We're lucked out. But there's a couple other solutions here, too. So let's get that on here. Right there. And it's right here we need it the most. So we pop that out. See what happens here. You want to go slow. You do not want to go fast on this stuff. It's easy to overdo it. This is a nice stipple die. And it doesn't mock up the flange. It doesn't weaken the flange. Aluminum is very sensitive to cracking with um, a non-stipple die. So you've got to be very careful. So now we're down to about a quarter of an inch or so. About an eighth of an inch.
it uh, looks about pretty close, a little bit more. That's pretty close. Yeah, I could do a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit more right here. Right, it looks like it went a little too much. That's easy to fix. I need a little more here. Uh, I did go overboard just a little bit. We'll go over to the stretcher and we'll stretch it out a little bit. Panel's looking really nice. We got that flange in. Now we're going to determine where I overdid it. Alright, so I got a little rock right here. So I'm going to pull that back just a little bit. Now this is my design shrinker stretcher here, the one I prefer to use. Right here, I'm a little overboard. Now let's pull that out there. Now it's about right over here. And we might go overboard this way. You got to be really subtle with this to get it just right. Each little kick can move it sometimes an eighth of an inch, so you gotta watch really carefully here. And that's looking pretty good. So the only flaw I have there now is I gotta I have to work this edge down a little bit. You can see where that edge isn't isn't right, so we'll work that down now and then that'll look pretty good. I think I'll get a hammer. Um, is my snap on hammer there? Yeah, that's one. I've got my trusty snap on here. That gives a more directed blow so I can um, be concentrated on my blow. Lots of little hits, let them add up.
So the bend is a little wide of the line, so I'm walking that line over a little bit. This little settled stuff makes it fit together a lot nicer. That's a lot better. That might have changed this relationship a little bit. Oh, it looks pretty good. Uh, it's not bad. We might uh, revisit that a little bit later. Now, this one here, this flange is a piece of cake. This one's a little complicated one. We got to go down 90 and then come back again to make that headlight seat. So, what we'll do is first we have to transfer the point so I can bend it to the other side. We'll use the the, um, the pair of dividers and I'll get that all marked and have it taped up and when you come back. Let's see, so. Alright, I'm going to try to do this joggle now. Tip the first bend down 90 and um, I might be wrong. I don't know if I can do this. I might have to anneal it, but let's give it a shot and see what happens. This metal does give, but it puts a fight up. This could be a little tight little spot too. So let's see if I can tip that over. Okay, so there's the first course. Let's we'll see where we're at. We're a little wide right here. Everything else looks pretty good, so I should adjust that line in. And maybe a little bit over here, too. So I'll make that adjustment. We don't need this cutoff. That's the cutoff line there. Take that off. Take that off. So that obviously needs a little shrink right there. It's puckering up. So we'll throw a shrink in that, otherwise it'll give us trouble. So I'm going to go over to the shrinker. Mark's not probably going to come over, but you saw the shrinker operation. I'm going to just shrink that. Now we'll do the second uh, run through. I adjusted the line a little bit. Just pushing it through, lifting and pushing.
This is our second pass through. We're about halfway there. We're going to actually have to stretch this to come down. Um, we'll have to make sure that we have that stretch just right. Um, and that's going to be a tricky little thing. We'll show you how we do that. And then once we get this to 90, and then uh, we'll tip this back up, and that's the actual seat for the headlight. I'll opt to try to knock this over manually with the hammer. Let's see how that goes. That wasn't good. I mocked the panel up. I gotta knock that back. Fulcrum in the wrong spot yields a bad mistake. So I'll do it this way. This looks more user friendly. Now I'm gonna need a face with a round. I can get it started here though. Let's see what happens. So we're doing these little intense blasts here. It's actually coming out all right. I thought I was going to have to kneel it, but it looks like I can do it without a needle. Now let's see where we're at. Okay, we're a little wide of the line, so we got to walk it in a little bit more here. This is where we got into trouble last time. So. Remember, if you screw up, everything you screw up, you can fix. But those are all detours that take time, so try not to do the screw-ups. So I'm going to do a careful observation of that seat on the other original fender. See how we're doing here. Yeah, it's like 90 degrees, so I gotta get it 90. So we got this section pretty good. Got a little bit of a screw up right there. Fix that. Now let's see if we can get this section coming over. I'll have to go to the edge of the bench. That gives me room to swing my hammer. Let's see where we're at. That's looking good. I gotta come in uh, a little bit right here. To get that line in further, let's see. This is a perfect example of where a post dolly will really help help out here. So let me get one of my post dollies, and that'll make it a lot more user friendly. So I'll find a post dolly that I can use. I got to slap that out. I got a little defect. Find a post dolly, get it set up, and then mark and film that, and we'll get the rest of that tipped over nicely. All right, this is the post dolly I'm going to use. I made this up. This is just mild steel. I call this one the hatchet. Gives you a good uh, fulcrum to hit over. These are my holders that we make here. And that give you ability to turn them, and you have up and down motion.
I'm going to have to ask Mark to hold the end of that over there. I hope I got it. Yeah, let's see if we can hold that end. There we go. Now, the problem is, I think we have a lot more curve than we want right here, so this has to be stretched out a little bit. We can marry it up to the other panel and see what that says. Yeah, well, it's, it's bottoming right here. But let me see if I can run the, just check the parallel line here. Let's see how it looks. Well, it's not too far out. Let's see. Right here, it needs to be stretched big time, right here. And let's do that. Let's do a little bit of stretch on that. I can't get in there anymore, that's good. Let's check that against the original panel. It's very difficult to gauge this because it's such a weird curve here. This is where if you have a, if you're in production of these, you would have a full surface uh, buck and you would be able to put that panel on and you can hammer form that right in there. Oh boy. Looks like I need to shrink that, stretch that some more over here. It's way too much. This line, that line. Looks like I need to sh stretch it or shrink it right in there. And sh I mean, let me shrink it right here, and I'll stretch it over here. Just need a little more stretching right in here. I think that might do it. After we tip this other edge, um, we can adjust that little quarter inch sliver there. We'll, with a couple blocks of wood, you can move it one way or the other. And we're only going to have to move it maybe an eighth of an inch or so. Ideally, if we had the headlight bucket, we could set the headlight uh, trim in there and then that would be a gauge for us, a nice curved gauge. We could make a curved gauge, but uh, I think we'll be fine. All right, so now we're going to tip this seat of the joggle up here. We're going to follow that line right there. And we'll see what we got. Uh-oh. Doesn't look like I can get in there. It's conflicting over here. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe I can do it. Uh, it looks like it's going. The light's in the way. Move the light out of the way. I'm gonna lift this up a little. The easiest way to do this would be with a hammer form. A hammer form seats it in perfectly. All the subtleties are eliminated. It becomes a really fast procedure. This is a tricky little bugger right here. And some people will say, oh, I can do that in my pull max. I want to see it. Difficult to do in a pull max. So we'll give it one more. Ron, and we do, might do the rest with a pair of uh, my parallel pliers that I use.
Okay, that's good enough. Now we use the parallel pliers to bring it up. Well, that's a good start. Now we'll use the hammer to dress that a little bit. We're probably going to need a beater bag. We'll get a beater bag right here. Mark to the rescue. Put that right there. So that gets a good start on that. It's going to need a little tuning. We're probably going to have to adjust the, the width a little bit. This needs to be cleaned up here. I can see that. So there could be another half hour of just cleanup of that seat. Uh, the same thing is going to have to happen. I did a little bit on the other joining part that's over here on that front section. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to tip this. This needs to be wide. I'll tip that together with the other one. And I'd like to weld this before I tip this one too. So this one here is inconsequential. That's no big deal. So I don't think I'll do that tonight. And I don't think I'll do the cleanup. But I just wanted you to see that panel. When we start putting the details, we give it the haircut. It's uh, looking pretty nice. And now what's going to make the magic is getting that back section, which is a pretty easy panel done. That mostly is just arrangement. Get these welded together, tip all the flanges, tune this up, and that's going to be in the next video. We're still going to get back to the main section of the aluminum bonnet. Uh, I'm still waiting for the uh, final uh, tuning of the, uh, of the louver die. We still need a little bit. I haven't had the time to work on it. My volunteer Frank is uh, kind of stymied on it, so I've got to do it. Uh, I still need to finish up the other side, which is going to be done off camera of the top section, the, the left hand side. And then we'll be doing all the welding and final tipping and all that stuff for that center section. And uh, we'll have this just about done. And then Mark has been working on over there. He's uh, made the gauges and the flexible shape pattern for the lower apron piece. So we're getting close. I know it's taking a lot of time, but uh, 
we can only devote so much time for a week with the videos. And actually right now, it's 11.30 p.m. and Mark has got an hour drive to get home, so he's going to be at 1 o'clock in the morning before he gets to sleep at least. So uh, I want to thank you for watching. You might have noticed that we renamed the uh, YouTube site today. We call it Rachelene's Pro Shaper Workshop. So that's going to be the new official name and we've got a lot of uh, stuff planned. You'll be really surprised in the coming next few weeks. Well, it's Rachelene from Charlton, Massachusetts. Hope you learned something. Thank you.